Hello everyone, it is just Chris here again, and I am back on Cinnabar Island because I am going to be completing my no healing challenge on this route. This water route here, which is technically part of the last one, but I'm gonna let that one slide for myself because if I didn't let it slide, that would be impossible. Uh, anyways, you might have noticed how my team has changed a little bit. I brought a new member. What's up, my Slowpoke? Because I want him to level up a little bit. Oh, I forgot he is slow. Well, this is gonna be harder than I thought it would be. I'm embarrassed at myself right now. Alright, let's try that again. Where was I? No healing challenge. Okay. So, Slowpoke is ridiculously slow. He will not be able to outspeed these tentacles, which is why I brought him, because I wanted to level him up. I thought it would be a good idea to fight tentacles, because they're tentacles. What are they going to do? They're going to wrap him and hacks me to death. That's what they're doing here. Tables have turned. Okay, but I'm going to pull through with what's up here. Because he is my only other psychic type Pokemon that I haven't leveled up. Aside from my new Staryu Sirius, who I haven't leveled up because I just caught it. So, I think I'll be okay with some switch training right now, but keep in mind I have absolutely no items. So, if my Pokemon get hurt, they stay hurt. And one of, I guess, kind of my side goals is to get Bellissima up to a level where she learns another grass attack, other than Vine Whip, because Vine Whip just doesn't have any power points. It's got 10 power points, and that's not enough for me to rely on it. Thankfully, my Poke Flute has unlimited power points. Unfortunately, Poliwag, when controlled by the computer, has unlimited power points for all of its moves, including Hypnosis. So this is just going to be a power, a, a battle of the wills. And a battle of Bellissima's speed. Uh, why is a baby Poliwag faster than a Weeping Bell? I mean, I guess Weeping Bell can't really move without legs, so okay. I give it that, but it's a baby Poliwag. I'm like five levels higher than it. Okay. I can live with a 95% hit rate, but not when it makes me need to use my Poke Flute five times. <laughs> okay. Barely any experience for everyone. Yeah, no, I, I'm not in a Seeking. Oh, come on. Missing two out of three times. What are the odds of that? It's one in 20 miss rate. Okay. I'm sad that none of that experience went to anyone else, but what can I do? Okay, at least she has money for me. Ooh, lots of money. I don't know if I went up or down. I'm gonna do both. Okay, that means more tentacle battles for me. Yay! There's one more, two more. Okay. It'd be nice if What's Up was at least faster than the level 10 tentacles. But he's just too slow, and he always hurts himself in confusion. I swear, tentacool, I mean slowpokes, are more likely to hurt themselves in confusion because they're so slow and dumb. I had such good luck earlier, I swear the game is just out to get me now. 74 experience, come on. Okay. You know, when you're out here in the water, away from the island, you really shouldn't swim this far out. So Cable is going to be my team member that I am the most worried about because he has low defense and low HP and I cannot heal him. Oh my. Yeah. Th this is exactly why I was worried about that. On the other hand, I don't think the Goldines have Peck anymore, nor the Sea Kings. They just have their really strong horn attacks. So at least what's up got a level. Maybe he can outspeed the level 5 tentacle now. Mm, nope, this is not happening. 
Let's try Bellissima, actually. If it doesn't have Peck, Bellissima might be okay. Is that two or three hits? If it gets a critical hit, though, that's gonna hurt. Oh, I thought so. Come on, Bellissima. Come on. Okay, knock it out. Yep, okay. Yeah, all right. Still no new levels, no new attacks. Yeah, the abandoned mansion, okay. Uh-oh, this is the one with Cloyster. So this one I'm a little bit worried about because last time, Lollylay actually fought the Cloyster. So I don't know what I'm gonna do here. And of course it is exactly level 30, which is when it learns its ice attack. Oh. Of course. Yeah, I'm having really bad luck with confusion today. But if I can hit it a few times and shake off the confusion, yeah. Okay, we're at the minimum. Okay, we're at the average now. Let's get above average. Come on, of trials. Yeah. Okay. Tackle? Is that gonna do it? No, it's not. But it is okay. All right. Another shell there. At least this one doesn't get a free hit. Yeah, I got that one with just two clamps. Now this one I don't think I'm going to be able to cheese like that, but I can try. Uh oh, missed. I don't think Bug is weak to ice, is it? Oh, raising its defense. Actually, that's bad for Stinger. Oh, that is like no damage. Doesn't especially hurt him, but it's not... not something that I want to be hit with. Okay, I've cheesed it. That's awesome. Let's try a Surf now, because that's a special attack. Poister has high special defense, but super high regular defense. Okay, awesome. That was awesome. Okay, and Stinger leveled up. This is one of the trainers that I thought I would have a lot of trouble with. And I got lucky. Okay. Oh, is that a bird keeper? Okay, level 5 tentacle. Can my slowpoke outspeed it? No, it can't. That's hilarious. But maybe it can one-hit KO it at least. Okay. And let's use Cable first. Because, yeah, my grass Pokemon are not really equipped to be fighting birds. Half of my team is weak to the flying type, so... Oh, I do have of Trials with Aurora Beam if Cable should fall. And he may. Uh-oh. I really wish Pikachu learned Thunderbolt in Generation 1. He learns it in yellow, but that's only because it's your special Pikachu. The other ones won't. Never, ever, ever learn Thunderbolt unless you use your 1TM. Now, I am probably going to use my cheap tactics, my knowledge of glitches and everything, to get myself some extra TMs so that I can use one for... Ooh, come on, survive. Oh, oh no, that's bad. That's really bad. Come on, Cable. Two times. You're faster. Come on, Cable. Knock it out. Yeah, Cable. Okay. Pidgeotto. Okay. So I'm going to get myself some extra TMs so I can use the TMs and not feel bad about them being gone forever. Oh, sand attack. At least it uses Whirlwind. So I'm going to do that, and then I am going to use the TMs instead of just hoarding them in my PC and taking up all my space in the PC. Oh, that was painful, but I got it. Okay. Cable just barely survived that one. Oh, you can still use... HMs, even if your Pokemon are fainted, don't give me that. Don't give me no... No sob story about your Pokemon. I'll give you a sob story. My Slowpoke is getting hurt by Pokemon six levels lower than it. 
that it has a type advantage over. But I think I am almost at the end here, and I'm not going to regret bringing my Wazap too much. Ooh, one Pokemon. That means, ooh. Level 35, this is for Bellissima. I remember thinking that Staryu and Starmie were so, so, so super strong because of Misty. Misty and Cerulean Gym. And then when I battled all the swimmers out here, I remember thinking that Staryu was so, so, so weak because this is the strongest Staryu that you encounter. And it has Swift. That's its special attack. No more Bubble Beam or anything like that to worry about. No more giant levels to overpower your Pokemon. And not a whole bunch of experience until that one with the Starmie. Ooh. Yeah, you should've. I feel like there was one with the Starmie, though. Is this around the corner here? Okay, who's left? Who's left? Are you the last one? I am not on vacation, but it is a Sunday, which is the closest thing to vacation that I can enjoy with all of this coronavirus out here. So topical, eh? Talking about coronavirus? Yeah. Ooh, just one poke from a twin needle got that tentacool. I think Bellissima can take a horsey at least. Even in her damaged state. Come on. Beautiful. Get a couple of growths in there. And take it out with acid, unintuitively, so I can save power points for Vine Whip, which has 10, max, lame. Seal! Ooh! This is the first seal that I'm seeing, and I know that there are 5 billion more seals in Seafoam Islands, so I will see a lot of them. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, no mercy. Well, that's cool. I, I always forget that. Used to be one island. Okay. Well, I, I beat everyone. Maybe I fought a Starmie last time? I don't know. Well, now that I'm here, I guess I will catch a seal, and then I will make my way back home to Cinnabar Island, even though that's not home. Oh yeah, and the most perfect leveling up spot for my Grass-type Pokémon is right here. Yeah. Level 37? Is this the level? Is this finally the level where- nope. I just realized that I didn't teach any of my Pokémon strength yet, I think. Maybe I taught it to Hitmonlee. Leroy J. Okay. Here is my seal. It might be strong, so I'm gonna put it to sleep. It's not gonna work, it's gonna knock me out. It's gonna work this time, though. Okay. One acid should be enough. Ooh. Could've knocked it out. I think this is the only one that I need to catch from here. All right. Seal, and I have to listen to that stupid dinging. Okay, it's a sea lion. Okay. It's got a hard horn. Bashing through thick ice, and that's why the headbutt hurts so much. I'm gonna call it Sea Dog, because in Korean, they're called Mulge, which is literally Water Dog. Oh wait, Water Dog. A direct translation of Sea Lion in Korean is Water Dog, which Sounds really hilarious to me, even though sea lion sounds completely normal. Don't think about it as like sea lion, like a but water lion, but water dog. It just sounds funny. I like it. Okay. Well, I don't have any Pokemon to quick travel back, so I'm going to have to surf back the old-fashioned way. And what the heck, I'm going to include this in my no healing run because my Pokemon are looking pretty hurt, even though they shouldn't be. They're supposed to be stronger than this. That's okay. I'm just going to make a beeline for Cinnabar Island, and then I'm going to call it a day, and hopefully I don't get wiped out by a level 40 Tentacruel or something that's hiding in the ocean here. I think Surf's battle animation... Ooh, level. I think Surf's battle animation is my favorite Generation 1 animation. One of my favorite. There are lots of good ones, but Surf, top five, I think, for me. Top five. Okay. 
I made it safely back, only one random encounter. Guys, thank you so much for watching my no healing run of Route, whatever that was, half of Route 20. I caught a Pokemon, I'm feeling good right now. I am going to probably do some glitches right now. All right, so I am back in Cerulean City because I am going to get my second Mew. And I wasn't 100% sure if it's possible to get a second Mew. I made that How to Catch Mew video and I said, you know, I think in theory it should be possible to catch that second Mew, but I wasn't 100% sure. I think some people online said that it might be possible. I don't know. I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try. And here's my team here. Got a bunch of Pokemon that I haven't really used before, but I've got Arilu. And by the way, I am doing post-commentary, I think for the first time in either of mine or Safia's Let's Play. Uh, normally, we just, while we play, we're just talking, and yeah, now I'm actually talking to you guys now, in the present. <laughs> um, <laughs> all of our videos recently have been recorded in 2020, like a year ago, more than a year ago at this point. And um, so now I can finally talk to you guys. And the reason isn't because I, I did the glitches now, I actually did the, this, I recorded all of this gameplay last year as well, but I didn't say anything while recording it because I thought I was going to turn it into one of those instructional videos like I did with the original How to Catch Mew video, and I think I'm, I'm going to put that into a card, maybe put the card a little bit earlier because I mentioned the video earlier anyways. So hello! This is now, this is 2021. What a year! <laughs> and obviously we have a huge backlog um, of, you know, stuff that we've recorded and not uploaded. So Safia and I have been really busy this past year, obviously. I mean, I'm sure you guys can tell. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we are back in Canada now. Oh, there we go. I did the glitch properly this time. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we were, we were back in Canada. We were in Korea teaching English. And uh, I think we mentioned it on our, um, like our social media and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know if we mentioned it in the videos, maybe in some of the descriptions and stuff. So uh, that's where we are. We're back in Canada. And um, we're currently uh, living in two different places right now, just because of, you know, different family situations and whatnot and the pandemic and stuff like that. And we've been really busy because we have been in uh we, we went both of us went back to school different fields for both of us and i guess i'll comment on what's going on in the game now as well um if you guys don't know what's been going on here it's the mute glitch basically you need to get into a really weird state in the game where the game thinks that you're in a battle and then thinks that you're not or something like that and then when you go and battle this trainer it puts a bunch of numbers into the somewhere <laughs> that are based off of the Slowpoke's stats. And then it uses those stats to give you an encounter later on when it finishes that first encounter that was started that I flew away from, which is why I was resetting the game a number of times there. So after you beat this trainer, you're going to get a special encounter once you go to the right spot. It's a really weird glitch. It's so cool. I found out about this in like, I don't know. I want to say before 2010, like around 2007 or something like that. And, you know, that's one of the amazing things about Generation 1 to me, is that we're still kind of finding things out about it. I mean, even, you know, 2000, 2006, 2007, that's a long time ago now. But, I mean, it's a really long time after the game was released. And you would think that, you know, a game on the Game Boy, it's going to be something that's simple, something that we would know everything about of every single detail we would know every secret everything hidden in every nook and cranny but that's got to be 10 more than 10 years more than a decade after the game was released people discovered you can catch a legitimate mew and it's not completely legitimate in the sense that oh here we go there it activated because i moved to a different route and then there we go there's mew yeah, so people found out about this because, um, I don't even know how they found out about it, they just did, <laughs> more than a decade after the game was released. And even now, I'm still learning things about Generation 1, like little quirks and stuff like that, in, just in the community, 
watching YouTube videos, reading the comments and stuff like that. In my Let's Play, I found out that y you can push A on the cycling path and you can break. Y you can stop moving downhill automatically. I didn't know about that. It's such a small thing. But I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just cool that there's so much stuff in Generation 1 that when I thought I knew everything, you know? Anyways, like I was saying earlier, um, so given our situations now, it's been kind of difficult to record. Back in, uh, back when we were in Korea in, uh, you know, 2020, I was thinking, okay, you know, we're, we're not going to be here for much longer. What we got to do is we got to record, you know, everything that we can. You know, we're going to finish the game, do everything, do all of our battles, everything, record all of that. And, oh, I think here, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if I brought enough uh, great balls. And uh, I didn't want to spend my money on Ultra Balls because I was still tight on funds. But anyways, you know, that was the plan. It was to record everything while we're here, while it's going to be easy for us, because then when we go back to Canada, it's going to be a lot harder because of the pandemic and everything like that. But, you know, this was when 2020 summer, we were naive and we thought, oh, you know, oh, OK, caught me. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, everything is going to be easier in the future. But in the immediate future, it's just going to be more difficult because Korea was kind of ahead of where Canada was in terms of the pandemic, and Star Control fans are gonna love this nickname from you. And if you remember my original Muse nickname, you know, got a nice uh, matching matching couple there. <laughs> Anyways, so back in, in Korea, um, you know, Korea was a little bit ahead of Canada in terms of the coronavirus situation. They were, it was looking like, you know, things were going to get all better. You know, it was just going to be a half a year situation. And the summer was, you know, summer was fine. You know, the whole country had probably double digit cases in the entire country. Meanwhile, in my province, it was like 100 or something in Canada. Um, which, you know, uh, compared to what would come in the future was literally nothing. But, uh, you know, we had no way of knowing back then. So I thought, we'll record everything in Korea, then when we go back to Canada, it'll be more difficult. Um, and then that way we'll just edit the videos and upload them. We didn't get around to recording the entire end of the game, um, just because <laughs> Korea went into their second wave. Um, and then, you know, we had closures at our school and... And we were like, well, you know, we gotta get outside and try to enjoy Korea you know, while we can. And, you know, it's a little bit difficult to do during a pandemic. So that kind of ruined a lot of our plans. We planned on, uh, originally before the, before coronavirus existed, we were planning on traveling after we finished our contract at school, you know, seeing more of Asia, seeing more of Korea, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then, you know, as the pandemic got bigger and bigger, we were thinking, okay, well, I guess we can't, you know, go to different countries and stuff. And then it became, oh, well, you know, I guess we can't really uh, go even throughout Korea. And losing, you know, some of our funds due to the closures, you know, that had an impact on that as well. But, I mean, it happened and we can't change anything about that. And now we're back in Canada. And, uh, you know, we wanted to come back as soon as possible because uh, family situations and, and stuff like that. And, you know, it's an un, unsure time. So, you know, that's why uh, we ended up back here. But, you know, that's still about a year ago. <laughs> um, anyways, so I've got my two Muse now. Uh, Star Control 2 references, both of them, the, the names go together. Samatra, it just just means great trophy in a made-up language that isn't even a language. So I was comparing their stats there. They're pretty much the same. I'm going to give Safia the Samatra Mew because it means great trophy if she beats me. Oh, okay. So here is my favorite glitch in all of Generation 1. Um, I'm actually going to run out of time to talk to you guys. So um, <laughs> I was planning on just having like a little glitch video but it's too small, especially after, you know, the episode before this, it was only going to be about 15 minutes long and that's too short for you guys. I don't want to do that to you, after, especially after making you wait for so long. But 
this glitch. This glitch is awesome. We have an old man here, and what the game does is that it takes your player's name, and then it's like, oh, well, I need to store the player's name so that I, I can make it say old man used Pokeball instead of Chris used Pokeball, for example. So it stores the player's name in the spot in memory where it stores the... Um, <laughs> the list of wild Pokemon that you can encounter. So when you walk into the next route, that just gets overridden. No problem, right? But when you fly to Cinnabar Island, well, there's also no Pokemon here. And you walk to the next route, well, when you walk into the next route, that gets overwritten. But here, we're not in the next route yet. But you can still encounter wild Pokemon here. Now, most of you guys know that. And then what it's doing now is that it's looking at the characters in my name to look at which Pokemon I can encounter when I'm on the beach here. So that's really interesting. So one of the letters in my name, S, I don't know which, so see, I'm seeing an Abra here. Like I shouldn't see that Abra. And I think it might've gotten possibly cut out of the last video, but Safia actually activated the glitch. Uh, not with the old man, but just by encountering Pokemon here. Uh, but she didn't know, I didn't tell her. Anyways, <laughs> so Abra, yeah, I can encounter that because of my name. And then there's the S uh, in my name, which allows me to encounter a version of Missing No, which is how I activate the glitch. I think I opened up my bag earlier to show that there's a TM in there. And I spent a lot of time doing this, and I didn't even record it because why would I do that? Here we go, scary part. There we go. Missing No. <laughs> I saw this when I was a kid, and... Uh, I think I'm going to have to update you guys about the situation a little bit later. There's not really any news aside from, you know, we're kind of back, we're in school and that's why we've been busy, but there we go. Um, I duplicated my items. Uh, let's talk about glitches. When I was a kid, I found out about this online and it was completely far-fetched. <laughs> like the Pokemon, anyways. Because there were so many rumors out there, you know, Mew is under the truck, Bill's secret garden, the grass outside of Palatine, you can catch all the starter Pokemon. And, you know, none of it was real, except for this one. And it's completely bizarre. It was such a weird set of circumstances. And then that got me chasing these kinds of rumors in video games like Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy IX, any other kind of RPG where it's kind of like a big open world, lots of exploration. And I thought, if this, talk to the old man, fly to Sidamar Island and surf on the beach, can let you duplicate your items and encounter a missing no, that's not even like, it's not even in the TV show. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so then I, I thought, you know, anything can be real. Uh, here I'm checking my Pokedex to make sure that Missing Note doesn't show up. It doesn't, which is perfect. Um, I know this messes up your uh, Hall of Fame. And uh, I didn't want to do that because I really like the Hall of Fame. But yeah, I did this for all of my TMs. It took a really long time. And um, yeah, but when I was a kid, I told another, an older kid about this glitch and it didn't work for him. And I didn't know why, because he followed the steps exactly. I told him the steps, and oh, here's here's the after state. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did this for all of the TMs, even the useless ones. Um, you know, because I want to do this before I have the the, the Hall of Fame to mess up, because I don't want to mess that up. But anyways, I told the older kid about this, and he did it, and it didn't work for him. And it didn't work because his name didn't allow him to into encounter missing no. And he got like the most boring Pokemon ever. He was encountering like Pidgeys. And like, <laughs> he was really angry with me because he like felt like he wasted his time. But anyways, that's all that I recorded. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you guys have any experience with the glitches, tell me about, you know, what the glitches were like for you when you were a kid. Did they open up your mind? Did they make you go crazy looking for rumors and stuff like that in old games? Tell me everything. Tell me about Cinnabar Island, Missing No. Tell me your favorite glitches in Pokemon. And that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you guys for watching and have an awesome day and an awesome week.